Welcome back to TK Tennis. Today we're spotlighting Matteo Berrettini, number 42 in the world. And the reason I'm going outside of the top 40, because I don't think you can mention inside the top 40 without mentioning Matteo Berrettini. His career high is number six, and he's coming back from some injury, and he's making a charge back up the rankings. He's 28 years old, and his height is 6'5". And he hails from Italy, Mr. Hugo Boss himself. So let's assess Matteo's game and discuss will he rise or will he fall in the rankings. In order to do that, we first have to spotlight his weaknesses and his strengths. And going first to weaknesses, we have it right here. Agility, speed, return, and backhand. This is where Matteo is nothing more than average in relation to the top 100 pros. He's not particularly agile, he's not particularly fast, and his return, while very consistent, and usually just chips it back, it's usually not a weapon. And on his backhand, I have it rated between average and excellent. And the reason I have it rated partially excellent is because of his slice backhand. His slice backhand allows him to stay in a lot of points. So he's very lanky, he's very long, and he has a dirty and nasty slice that allows him to keep his opponents pushed back into the court and not be able to attack. So these are his weaknesses. All right, going to strengths, his power. He has elite power when it comes to his forehand. He has elite forehand, and of course, he has an elite serve. As a matter of fact, what people don't realize is he has the best serve by statistics on the tour, above Hercats and above Zarev. This is a great example. Should you work on your weaknesses or should you work on your strengths? And when it comes to Mateo, he should clearly work on his strengths and not so much his weaknesses. He's not going to improve his agility or his speed at 28 years old by any meaningful amount. His return of serve may be able to be an area of improvement. But again, if you focus on just holding your serve in order to beat Mateo, you have to be able to beat him in tiebreakers. What he's hoping to do is that you have a weak game on your serve and he's able to break you and then he's able to serve out the set or beat you in the tiebreaker. That's essentially the only way you can beat Mateo because of his serve and because of his elite forehand. Now moving on to character traits. Let's take a look at that. What is his career commitment? Well, I have it in between average and dedicated. While he has been very dedicated at periods of time during his career, he's also been very average as well. And a great example might be his decision to be on the first season of Breakpoint in the Netflix series. While they couldn't get Nadal or Djokovic or Federer to be on the series or many other top pros, Matteo decided to be featured in the Netflix series. That speaks volumes, whether you like it or not. That speaks volume, whether you're fully dedicated or elite on your career commitment. What about his on-court temperament? I have it as resilient attitude. So he plays with confidence, with an attitude, and you can see it on his on-court temperament. His sportsmanship is very fair. And his ego, it's arrogant. Whether you think that's a knock against him or not I don't mean it to be a knock that's just his personality trait he's an arrogant individual he has an arrogant attitude there's not much else you can say about it that's just the fact of of who he is and that's okay and that, if that helps him play better tennis that's wonderful however most of the best tennis players in the world throughout the last 20 years have been more humble whether you're talking about Sampras or Sinner or Alcaraz or, or Djokovic or I can say Djokovic was humble maybe it was more measured uh, but certainly with Nadal to be the number one player in the world consistently you have to have a little bit of humility and realize that you can get beat by anyone at any time if you're not playing your best so his ego is arrogant whether you like that assessment or not so what's the outlook for Matteo? Will he make it back into the top 20? Well, if he's not getting injured, if he doesn't get injured again, he will certainly make it back into the top 20. His weapons are too strong between his serve and his forehand, and he's been as high as number six. So even though he's 28 years old, if he can remain healthy, he'll be back in the top 20. What's his tier? I have him as premier. Can he be a contender for Grand Slams? No, I don't think so. I think there's no chance of that unless he gets extremely lucky with the draw and he's playing incredible tennis. He won't be a contender anymore, and he certainly is not elite because he has not won a Grand Slam. So he's in that premier category between the 15th and 20th top-ranked players. If he remains healthy, I think he's going to be there again. But can he win Grand Slams? Absolutely not. And will he rise or will he fall? Well, we just discussed that. He's certainly going to rise from his number 42 position coming back from injuries. 
and we expect to see him in the top 20 in not too long. So what do you think of Mateo's game? Do you think it's aesthetically pleasing? And I'm not talking about his look, but I'm talking about his game itself. For me personally, I don't really enjoy watching Mateo play. His forehand is a big windshield wiper. His serve is a little quirky and janky. And overall, his game, to me, is just not aesthetically pleasing. I think many of us or most of the tennis world loved watching Federer play because of how beautiful his game was. And when I think of Federer's game or Dimitrov's game or many other players, Mateo's game aesthetically just doesn't match up. What do you think? Do you think that assessment is spot on or am I way off? So that's my assessment of Matteo Berrettini. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this series, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next days.